Welcome to Life Mastery for Women. I'm your host, Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. I've been studying mind mastery and emotional management and energy work and its connection to spirituality for over 25 years. And in this podcast, I help guide you out of your daily struggles in life in the areas of health, wealth, relationships, and spirituality. Life is hard, but your daily growth doesn't have to be. Join me three times a week as I lead you inward on a healing, connecting, and creating journey. Let's go get that nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. Hey ladies, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you managing your energy. And if you are not managing your energy, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. So I want you to imagine something for a second. We're going to, I'm going to reference this image that I'm about to give you so you can better understand what I'm going to talk about. Um, but it does, it does play a huge role in our lives to help us to create this accomplishment in our life. And most of my clients now are really trying to accomplish things, but yet because we live in this distracted society, they're having a hard time focusing on one thing at a time. And so I want to explain how energy works and how we can best manage our energy so we can propel our lives forward. The, the foundation that, well, let me, let me give you the image. Okay, so picture um, a person, a body standing in front of you and um, the head of the body is the mental energy. That's your thoughts, your attention, your focus, your, perspe- your perspective, your perception, okay, your concentration. Then the physical body of the person, the neck down is all the emotional energy, okay, that's, that includes your pain but also your joy, All of the air and the space around the body is spiritual energy, okay? So that all contains this energy that we can utilize that most of us are unaware of, but that is the foundation of my teaching. When you look at this image that I've just created for you to look at, to think about, which one do you think has more strength? The mental, the body, or the spiritual? Well, the spiritual does because there's more of it. Okay, the mental is the weakest. It's the small portion. Now, do we need all of these pieces? Yes. But if we use them correctly, this is when life gets really freaking exciting. Now, when I talk about spiritual energy, that is the foundation of my teachings is to go in and to work. Now, this spiritual energy is in all things. It's everywhere. You can call it God. You can call it source, universe, your subconscious, superconscious, whatever. It is this energy around us that most of us don't know how yet to use or tap into, but most of us are at least aware of it or have been aware of it at some point in our lives. The One of the pillars of my teaching, though, is... To create because I'm so impatient and I want fast, quick change and I want fast, quick results is simple yet powerful. I want things to be easy and I want the tools that I'm using to be powerful because I want fast change. And that's what I want to explain to you. Now, the, the point that I'm bringing this up is there's a lot of people that are wanting to get things done. They're wanting to accomplish things. They're wanting to um, set goals and achieve goals, or they're wanting happiness quicker or healing faster. Um, They want to, they have um, the excuses that there's not enough time, or there's too many interruptions, or there's just too much to do. There's I'm never going to accomplish anything. I'm never going to get anything done. I don't know about you, but I hear that in my house all the time. And sometimes I say it until I do a couple of the steps, which I'm going to share with you today. But I want to paint this picture for you that is when we are exerting so much mental energy, and now picture from that head on that body that all of these arrows are leaving the mental body. Okay, all of these arrows, this is equivalent to having too many tabs open on a computer. I don't know if you've ever seen that or worked with that when I'm putting out um, programs or, you know, building my coaching program, I have, you know, 25 tabs open on my computer. And I would say right about one o'clock, I start getting overwhelmed. Well, that is my it's too much of my energy leaving the body, too much of my mental energy. 
And when that happens and I start feeling overwhelmed, it's really hard for me to focus, to concentrate, to calm down, and to even be creative. I have too hard of a time trying to create things, even if I'm just going to record a podcast or I'm working on a slide deck or I'm you know, doing the behind the scenes stuff like, okay, the client comes in and then they have to click on this button and then that brings them to a calendar and then the calendar and then they can book a call and then they get on the call and then you know, where's, where's my sheet for you know, referencing about the questions? I mean, it's all this behind the scenes stuff, all these emails you know, the posts, the taking care of social media, whatever, I get very overwhelmed. Well, then if you're thinking about all of these different pieces, I've got, you know, nine tabs open just for that. Well, by the time one o'clock comes around, it makes perfect sense to why I'm feeling so overwhelmed because overwhelm is energy leaving the body and it's leaving the body in scattered ways. And that's exactly what overwhelm feels like. It feels scattered. So, Emotional energy now is the next strongest. We're going to come back to talk about mental energy, but I think it's important to understand the role of of each of these pieces. Mental energy is for us, like a couple of days ago, I was giving a... um, Uh, talking about a podcast and gave an analogy about being in a dark room with a flashlight. And if you give me a second, I can tell you which podcast that was. And when we're standing in this flashlight, let's see. Um, It's how to use your internal compass. And this is when I was, it's number 330. And this is when I was talking about, you're standing in this big dark room and there's, there's, that's the body. And then there's the you that is the spiritual version of you holding a flashlight and the flashlight is your mind. And so this is when you get to move around inside and go, okay, I want to focus on that. I want to focus on this. I want to focus on this. And you're moving the flashlight around. That's your spiritual being, the real you that is pointing the flashlight at these topics, these things in your environment or in your physical body that you want to focus on. Okay. So there's a, obviously a very perfect reason for your mind. (laughs) We need it to direct our thoughts. When you can use your mind to direct your thoughts to do this, create an emotional response in the body. That is, in my opinion, one of the most important ways to use our mind. So if I want to create something, let's say a great job, then I need to use my mind to focus on what a great job would feel like, okay? Now I'm using my mind to focus on what my body should feel like if it has a job, a great job. So I want to elicit, use my mind to focus on this perfect job, visualize it, whatever that means to you, perfect relationship, perfect amount of money, perfect health, whatever that is. And what you wanna do is you want to use your mind to create a physical sensation in your body, that we call emotions, because emotions are now the next strongest energy. It's the next, it's the next way to communicate with the universe. So when I use my mind in this effective way, then the body now can start to move and I become in the flow. Okay. If I'm using my mental energy out in the world, and I'm pointing at 19 different things, I got to send an email, I got to record a podcast, I got to write those social media posts, I got to make sure that the emails are correct, I got to write the reminder emails, I've got to, oh yeah, I've got to reach out to my one client, and I got to talk to Amy on lunch, I have to go get groceries, I have to pick up Cameron from school, holy crap, well, no wonder we are like exhausted when we get home, and no wonder our health is failing, it's no wonder, because our energy is not focused in the right direction, so what I should do instead is start to use my mental energy to focus into my body and not focus on my body, like focus you know, on any pain that's in my body, but I'm going to focus my mental energy on a vision, on a visual cue that creates an emotional response in my body. Like, oh, wouldn't it be so great to record three podcasts today? And now my body goes, yeah, like I get into it. I'm like, oh, wouldn't it feel so accomplished? Wouldn't it feel so amazing? And the next thing I know, I'm sitting down with my perfect microphone and I'm recording a podcast and then lo and behold, I'm done. I've recorded three and it's over. And I hardly even know that it happened. That's how it works. Okay. There's another way for it to work too. When, when we use our mental energy and we use the spiritual 
energy. So we can focus down into bot into the body to feel good, to help our physical body accomplish things. Like going to the gym. So instead of me just going, oh, I got to go to the gym and using my mental energy to drag my body to the gym, you're going to notice that you're going to hate going to the gym, okay? Then instead, I can use my mental energy to focus into my body and say, what would it feel like if, I, if my health was optimum? What would it feel like if my body was amazing, if I was strong and flexible and I didn't have pain and I could move quickly? Oh, I would feel so great. And then expand on that until your body feels it. Next thing you know, you're done at the gym and you're driving home, <laughs> right? And you just feel amazing, okay? Another way to do that, to expand on that, is to use the spiritual energy. And now we focus out into the spiritual energy in a form of meditation. So what we do is we go inward and we focus on this gap. We focus on the space in which this energy is located in this space. There's everything around you, like if wherever you're sitting or standing right now or sitting, you're probably not standing and listening to my podcast, but if you are, the air that's around you is full of this energy. And it is, it is this, it is this material. It's not even material. It's this, we'll call it space. In this space, there is, it's creative. So I literally can create my life out of this, I want to say this thin air that's around me. This is, it's air and, but it has this mind and this creative and this intelligence that I can tap into. Now, how do I do that? Well, when I go into this meditative space, I can think of these, of this dark space and create what I want to feel. Now, when I do that, I am going to sit in that space and, and basically stare at a clean slate. I don't want to put anything in there. I just want to be in that space. This is going to allow the tabs to start closing on your computer. Okay, not literally, don't freak out. <laughs> but this is going to allow your energy to come back into the body. So you're relaxing and you're thinking about this void. Sometimes I have my clients go into their heart space and just think, just picture the space around your heart chakra or picture the space around it and just be in the space like this blackness, this void, and just be there thinking and feeling about nothing. Just do nothing, think nothing, and allow this, this intelligence to create your life from that point. It is very powerful. Sometimes for those of you that want to control your life, there are definitely ways that you can do that and start to create from the space. But when you when you go out, you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jen. I'm going to do what now? I'm going to focus on this blackness. I'm going to let this blackness basically create my life. Oh, hell no. I need to have control. But I will tell you this. What it's going to do, it's not going to start creating for you, except it's going to create this. It's going to create possibility, opportunities, synchronicities, and it's going to create, it's going to open the door to what it is that you're wanting, whatever that is. You're going to start feeling calmer, more peaceful, more in balance, and in the flow. If you don't know what these things feel like, and a lot of my clients don't, if you don't know what that feels like is to feel at peace or especially in the flow, you have felt it before. You might just not know that you that that's what it was. But I encourage you to spend time in that gap. And that is a clear, clear, surefire way to start creating some momentum in your life. Because if you are feeling like there's not enough time and there's too many interruptions and there's too much to do and I never accomplish anything, then it is imperative that you call your energy back. So call your energy back into the body, close the computer for a moment, close your eyes, and either do one of two things. You direct your mental energy to a way in a visual, using a visual to get down into the body, to create a physical sensation, a physical emotion in the body that feels better than how you're feeling right now. Okay, so I can sit here and go, okay, I'm just going to close my laptop for a moment. I'm just going to go inward. I'm going to say, okay, this day is so amazing. I'm going to accomplish a lot. I have this clarity. I feel peaceful. And you're just going to, you're going to think a thought and you're going to create a visual in your mind that allows it to get down into the body. So the body starts to feel 
the emotion that you want to feel. You start feeling clarity. You start feeling um, the sensation of balance and harmony. And the next thing you know, your body starts moving. Okay. It's like, it's like an RC truck. It just all of a sudden starts going and it's just in the flow and you just keep directing it and you just get going. And the next thing you know, at the end of the day, you're like, oh my God, my desk is clear. All my post-it notes are thrown away and I've got two hours before I have to, the kids are going to be home or two hours before I have to start making dinner. I have all this free time. I'm not kidding. That is the power of focus when you use your mental energy in the right way. Now, Another way is just to allow like the serendipities and the synchronicities and opportunities and possibilities, all the ease to show up in your life, get in the gap. That is when life becomes magical. Okay. Now, one of the things that you can also do if you have to, if you're like, I, I'm going to meditate, Jen, but I really do need to get some stuff done, is here's some other things in the physical world that you can do. Because I know some of you are just like, give me something tangible that I can work on. Here's some of those tangible things. Number one is finish a task, okay? You might need a piece of paper. You might need some sort of a a notebook or a list or something that you can make notes because I know that a lot of projects that we have include other people and those people you might have to wait on their response. So I'm going to, let's say I I need to send an email to uh, Cameron's teacher. Okay, so that's on my list. And I need to record a podcast and I need to um, go to the grocery store and get dinner. Let's just say those three things. Well, the email requires that there's going to be a response. Okay, I need to write the teacher. And so then I need to wait for them to respond to me. What I'm going to complete on the list is sending the email. And that's it. Okay. The waiting will just show up a different day. Then I'm going to record a podcast and I'm going to do the whole process of recording the podcast. So I'm going to record the podcast. I'm going to upload it into Anchor. I'm going to add the intro, add the outro, do any editing that I want to do. And I'm going to hit publish. And then I'm going to and then I'm going to write the write up and I'm going to give it a number and I'm going to share it on social media. I'm going to finish all of the steps before anything happens. Now, some of you might go, yeah, but Jen, like, listen, you know, my projects take a long time. Like I need more, I need more than just an hour or so to finish something. Or I have, I work in an office or I, I work at home and I have a family and there's lots of interruptions. These are all things that you can set into place or into play, put into play or put in place. There you go. <laughs> you can put in place. So what Amy does, and so she has bigger projects. Well, we both do, but we have bigger projects. I don't handle interruptions well. She handles them better than me, but I'm still interrupting her is that we have a little plaque that she puts on her desk. So when I'm coming up to interrupt her, like when we work together, when I'm coming up to interrupt her, she has this plaque on her desk. And if she's in the middle of something and she's got the flow going, she's like really moving along, she can point to that sign and it says, ask me later. And so then I just make a note and I will just come back later and ask her. But if it's dealing with interruptions, you know, you can set something out. Now, if you're at work, it might be a little bit different. Make notes about where you are. Just say, okay, hold on just a minute. I'll be right there. Get a sticky note and says, you know, here's where I'm at in this process. That's what sometimes I have to do because when I get distracted or I get interrupted, I have a hard time coming back to where I was because so much of my stuff is creative that I lose my momentum and I have to remember where I was at. Okay. But that is a huge encouragement. Like right now I'm sitting in the living room, I'm recording and I'm doing laundry. And so I just realized that the laundry is done. And so what normally I would do is I would pause the the podcast. I would interrupt the podcast and I would go move the laundry to the dryer. Well, now, because I'm trying to elongate my concentration and my ability to focus and finish things because it feels so amazing, I just wrote down in my podcast book a little note with a star next to it that says laundry while I'm recording right now. Okay, I didn't get up and and I didn't pause it and 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 go and move the laundry. I just stayed here and my energy feels clear and crisp. It feels like I don't have that scattered feeling. Okay, okay. Another thing that you can do is focus on one thing at a time, which is kind of what I just did. So even though I have laundry going, I'm making some tea right now. I didn't stop and go do those things. I'm literally going to finish the podcast. Then I'm going to get my cup of tea and then I'm going to go move the laundry and I'm going to do one thing at a time. And then I'm going to finish those things. I'm going to finish that task. 
And then when it's finished, even if it's laundry, I'm just moving it to the next stage. When it's finished, then I can move on to the next thing. Because what we're doing is we are scattering our energy in a hundred different ways. I've got dishes started. I've got the garbage is bagged up. I'm making tea. I've got laundry going. And I'm like doing all of these things at the same time. My energy is out. Every time I focus on something, I leave a little bit, especially if it's not finished, even if it's not finished, is I'm leaving a little bit of my energy residue on that thing. Okay, like I have a little bookmark in my mind that the laundry still needs to be done, but it's not bothering me because I don't have to engage with it this whole time. But let's say I've I've got soapy water ready to go for the dishes and then my tea is sitting on this on the in the in the craft in the coffee pot and I'm recording and the dogs need to go out and it's all this stuff. My energy is on all of these different pieces. And so then now there's too much of my energy out and my body starts feeling chaotic like whoa 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 come on, our energy is spread too thin. So then now what I have to do is I have to go and I have to be awake. I have to wake up. I have to pay attention. I have to become present. I go, okay, I am going to go finish the laundry or move it to the next stage. Then I'm going to go pour my cup of tea. By the time I come back here, those five things that had a little bit of my energy residue, now are back in my mind. Okay, does that sort of make sense? Now they're back. And now I have more uh, mental energy to to work with. Okay. Another thing, and what I'm telling you right now is call back your energy. And I do that by getting grounded. I have to ground most days, several times a day. And it really depends. I have a big event coming up next, starting next Monday. It's a five day chakra healing event. And there's lots of moving pieces to creating an event like this. And I've been pretty scattered. And so I have to ground several times as I move from different segments because I want to keep my podcast going. I'm getting ready for this event. I'm trying to figure out what the the next 12 week, the chakra healing group coaching is going to be about. And I'm working on all those pieces. And so there's always a lot going on when I'm putting these events together or another program is starting. So my energy can get really scattered. So I'm like, okay, stop, stop, stop. And I just go, I'm calling all my energy back to me. I always light incense and then I do a grounding technique. Okay, and I have lots of different grounding techniques that I do. So if you are like me and you sometimes get scattered and interrupted and kind of lose your focus and and become overwhelmed or chaotic, these are really good steps to do. So finish things, um, uh, finish. And if you want to go back to listen to the art of completion, I'm sorry, the art of concentration. That is a really good episode to teach how to create more focus And then uh, focus on one thing at a time, finish that task, focus on one thing at a time, call your energy back. And then the last is practice meditation. Stop, like I do three times a day. I do a guided meditation in the mornings before I start my day. I set my intention, I ground, and I connect intuitively. That's my morning routine. And then throughout the day, there's like kind of the mid-morning where I reground and I connect intuitively. But then that's also when I call my energy back. And I do another 10 minute meditation where I literally just focus on the gap and I just focus on that space. And all I do during that 10 minutes is when I notice my thoughts, you know, skewing and different things is I just, nope, bring back to my breath and bring back, breathe back into my heart. And I just focus on my heart space and it, it tends to magnetize. Like I can feel this magnetic feeling in my heart when I do that. And that would be my last bit of information, my last step to you is to practice these things because these are the simple po- these are the simple tools. And I know that most of you will will listen to this podcast and get, you know, to the part where I even mention the word meditate and you're like, "Okay, okay, okay." But when you start doing it and you start seeing the power and the effect that it has directly right now on your life and the serendipities or really I want to say the synchronicities that start happening, you're like, "Holy crap. I'm going to do this." every freaking day. And it's amazing how it works. And so I wanted to share it with you. I hope that this finds you well. If you want a little bit more information, if you are listening to this in real time, February 27th, I have a five-day free event that's starting. And we're we're Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. The calls will be roughly, give or take a, a short, a little, like around an hour. And then, um, but it's a free event. So Come to my Chakras for Beginners group. You'll see the posts about it and you can you can log in or I'm sorry, you can register. And by registering for this event, you will get a free workbook. I mean, it's all free, but you'll get a workbook and you'll get the replays in your email. And um, 
it's an amazing, it's, it's amazing and powerful. I mean, the tools that I teach, like I said, are simple yet powerful. It's all tools that I have gathered through my 25 years of studying all different types of this kind of energy work like this, like mental, emotional, and spiritual energy, um, understanding how to work with energy and using my mind to direct that and to start kind of living in this creative space. So if this is something that you're interested in, check it out, go to my Chakras for Beginners page, or you can friend me on Facebook, J-E-N-M-A-C, and uh, send me a message, hey, when's your free event, you know, or where's the link for it, and I'll be happy to send it to you. So hopefully this finds you well, and you will start closing some tabs and start opening your heart. See you soon. Thanks for listening. And if you were inspired by this episode and are looking for healing, transformational growth, and a community to show up in, then please join me on Facebook under Jen Mack, J-E-N-M-A-C. Friend me and follow me. You can also reach out to me via messenger to see when my next program begins so we can work together to bring about your healing, deepen your connections, and start to create your bold, beautiful life. Also, if you are inspired by my podcast, please share your opinion in a review so others can be inspired too. Keep growing going and transforming and keep looking for those nuggets of inspiration.